In the headlines, a man gets even more time after already being sentenced to life in prison for murder. It was yet another great year for Rocky Mountain Police Department in getting unwanted guns off the streets and out of homes. And there's a new chief in town. Monday, the town of Nashville announced who he is. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak starting now. From WHIG TV, this is News Break 31. Now, here's Marie Torres. You're watching WHIG TV News Break, your voice in the community. I'm Marie Torres. First in our crime report, a man gets even more time after already being sentenced to life in prison for murder. According to Rocky Mount Police, Tuesday, 26-year-old Jason Collins Philpot was sentenced to seven and a half years in federal prison for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Philpot is currently serving a life sentence in the North Carolina Department of Corrections for the murder of 34-year-old Shawan Jones that occurred on September 10, 2008. On that day, it said Philpot entered the home of Jones and shot him multiple times, killing him. Philpot was convicted of first-degree murder in Edgecombe County Superior Court in November 2009. He is ordered to serve his latest sentence at the expiration of his life sentence. In other news, it was yet another great year in getting unwanted guns off the streets and out of homes. During Tuesday's gun buyback event hosted by the Rocky Mount Police Department, a total of 103 guns were turned into police. Last year, 95 guns were collected. According to Captain Jim Thomas with Rocky Mount PD, more assault rifles, handguns, and shotguns valued between $50 and $100 were turned in rather than smaller recreational guns such as pellet and BB guns valued at $5 at this year's event. 46 handguns, 46 shotguns, three assault rifles, and eight air BB or non-working guns were collected. Last year, Rocky Mount Police paid $4,610 to individuals turning in firearms. This year, they paid out more than $6,000 for those guns turned in. A great job done by our local police department. In Nashville, there is a new chief in town. Monday, the town announced that it has hired Randy Goodbroad as the new fire chief. Goodbroad, who is from Williamsport, Pennsylvania, will take the place of David English, who was serving as the interim fire chief since December. English was appointed after the prior fire chief, Tim Pope, resigned in November. The newly named fire chief has 37 years of experience with fire services through volunteer and career fire, rescue, emergency management, and emergency medical services services. In addition, Goodbroad last served as the fire chief of the City of Williamsport Bureau of Fire for over eight years before retiring in 2008. Town officials say that over 50 people from across the country applied for the position and that Goodbroad came highly recommended. His first day as Nashville's fire chief is next Monday, May the 9th. This week, Nash County officials are postponing a draft environmental impact statement geared to lock in $2 million in federal grants for infrastructure improvements at the proposed Sanderson Farms Poultry Processing Plant site off of NC Highway 97 and 995. Monday was decided to remove the county's draft from the NC Department Administration's State Environmental Review Clearinghouse. This comes as Sanderson Farms recently postponed their decision on whether or not to come to Nash County until they evaluate the country's demand for chicken and unstable prices of chicken feed. The scheduled May 10th public hearing discussing the county's environmental impact statement will also be postponed. Nash County, who says it still plans to pursue the grants, wants those funds to be used to construct wastewater improvements at the plant's proposed site. When we return on news break, summer fun is already starting. We'll tell you how you can join in. That and more right after these words.
Home Trends in Rocky Mount is moving to an all-new location. Now, all inventory must be sold in a giant million-dollar moving liquidation. It's all being sacrificed regardless of cost or loss because selling furniture is better than moving furniture. Don't miss the giant million-dollar moving liquidation at Home Trends. It's back. For a limited time, every Buick and GMC is now being offered at GM employee price to the general public. Plus, you can now get 0% financing for up to 72 months, too. Where? Only at Davenport Buick GMC in Rocky Mount. But that's not all. At Davenport, you'll also get something that GM employees don't even get. A lifetime warranty. GM employee price. 0% financing and a lifetime warranty. See if anybody beats that deal. But hurry, this offer is for a limited time. And it's only available at Davenport Buick GMC in Rocky Mount. Home Trends in Rocky Mount is moving to an all-new location. But first, all inventory must be sold. Home Trends is closed all day to prepare for a giant million-dollar moving liquidation. Starting Thursday, find all furniture being sacrificed regardless of cost or loss. Get ready. It starts Thursday at Home Trends. The Country Inn and Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn and Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Vachavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. Welcome back to WHIG TV News Break. I'm Marie Torres. With a fun and free event, the Imperial Center is doing it again. The City of Rocky Mount is inviting everyone out to the kickoff of the 2011 Downtown Live Summer Music Series beginning today at the Imperial Center. Tonight, the Embers will take the stage at 6 p.m. in the courtyard lawn located between the theater and the Arts Education Building. Concerts will be held every other Thursday evening from May 5th through September 8th, with the party starting at 6 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. Some of those artists performing this series include the Band of Oz, the Wallers, Liquid Pleasure, and the Craig Woolard Band. No tickets are required, and again, admission and parking are free for each concert. You're welcome to bring a lawn chair or blanket to claim your spot on the lawn as early as 5 p.m. Food and beverage vendors will be on site for each event, but coolers are not allowed. And the town of Nashville will be in full bloom this weekend. Beginning Friday, May 6th through Saturday, May 7th, is the Nashville Chamber of Commerce's Blooming Festival. The festival will take place in downtown Nashville and has already started with a carnival from now until Saturday, beginning at 5 p.m. Saturday will kick off, will kickstart the day's events with a parade beginning at 11.30 a.m. with a new route starting at First Street Extension through Washington, Alston, Church, and Bottom. Street. Several area people came out to this weekend's community paper shredding and e-waste recycling event. The event held on the parking lot of Golden East Crossing Mall in Rocky Mount was sponsored by the City of Rocky Mount, the United Way Tar River Region, and Keep America Beautiful. It helped to bring in loads of personal paper documents to be shredded and kept out of the wrong hands. Here's more from the event's facilitators and supporters. Hi, I'm Cornelia McGee-Anthony, Keep America Beautiful Coordinator for Nash and Edgecombe Counties. I'm here today at the paper shredding event and electronics recycling drive here at the Golden East Crossing Mall between the Sears and J.C. Penney entrances. And I have with me today the North Carolina Attorney General's Office, uh, United Way, and Shredded of North Carolina. I'm Rose White Hearn with the North Carolina Attorney General's Office, and shredding is a very important way to protect your identity. Identity theft is the fastest growing crime in this country right now, so it's very important that you protect your identity. 
We have this box here and it says burn on it. We want to make sure that you properly um, dispose of your financial documents, important documents in a secure fashion. Burning is not the option. The option is having it shredded in a manner that will be safe and secure and also it will be kept out of the hands of the wrong individuals. Hi, I'm Kim Adams with Shredded. I'm your local sales representative. If I can do anything for you or your business, please give me a call. My number is 252-412-1570. And please remember to keep it secure and safe. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jenny Morebutter with the local United Way Tar River Region. Volunteers behind me who've been helping us for the day. We're happy to be part of this partnership with the City of Rocky Mount. Keep America Beautiful shredded and our local Attorney General's office. United Way is about trying to give back and support our local community and this is a very important way that we can be a part of having a greener community and a safer community. So we appreciate all your support. As you can see here we have uh, several hundred pounds here of monitors and we've also retrieved lots of other e-waste items um, and the important thing here is we want to make sure we keep these items out of the landfill. So we have creative recycling with us today and they're going to properly dispose of our e-waste today for us. We have here Daniel and Aaron. We take this, the electronics back to our warehouse and we dispose of them properly by shredding it up and sifting out the different parts and properly disposing of everything and it gets recycled into other products. 99.999 percent of this stuff gets recycled. As opposed to? As opposed to just rotting a landfill. They all did a great job. In other news. For the land of the free and the home of the brave. And rallying for hope and a cure were hundreds of locals during this year's Relay for Life. The event that was held Friday through Saturday at the Rocky Mount Sports Complex gave way for many cancer survivors and their supporters to do everything from color to deliver for a cure. Uh, Charles Ingram, Southeastern Rocky Mount. Will Pitt, Southeastern okay. Rocky Mount. Uh, we're out here tonight because we're honoring one of our uh, loved ones that we lost to work with Southeastern, Janet Walsh, and lost her in December with breast cancer. And we thought we'd do this in honor of her. That's right. This year's Relay for Life of Nash County showcased support for the fight against cancer with vendors, a dunking booth, a concert, and much more. Groups even divided up into teams with their own way to bring about a cure. Of those teams, the top fundraisers were Ebenezer PH Church, who exceeded their goal of $15,000 and raised more than $22,000. Our own station, WHIG TV, came in second, raising nearly $9,000, followed by Spring Hope Elementary with nearly $8,000. The 17th annual event raised $241,000, a great start to its $330,000 goal. This year's Relay for Life incorporated a survivor lap and a torch and luminary ceremony to honor those who have been touched by cancer and to remember loved ones lost to that battle. Several participants made a personal commitment to save lives by taking up the fight against cancer. Relay for Life is an event held nationally by the American Cancer Society. After the break, it's the latest in sports and weather. Stay with us.
rates back. For a limited time, every Buick and GMC is now being offered at GM employee price to the general public. Plus, you can now get 0% financing for up to 72 months too. Where? Only at Davenport Buick GMC in Rocky Mount. But that's not all. At Davenport, you'll also get something that GM employees don't even get. A lifetime warranty. GM employee price. 0% financing and a lifetime warranty. See if anybody beats that deal. But hurry, this offer is for a limited time. And it's only available at Davenport Buick GMC in Rocky Mount. When it's happening to you, you'll hear from us. WHIG TV Newsbreak is reporting all the news, issues, and stories that matter to you. Call us at 252-885-1814, email us at marie.whigtv at gmail.com, or check us streaming live at whigtv.com. We're your voice, ready to bring you the news. The Country Inn and Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn and Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Vachavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. Thanks for staying with us. Here's a look at weather with WHIG-TV meteorologist Fred Holdsworth. Hello everyone. Time to take another look at our weather and our weather today is a little bit on the mild side. Cool air has filtered in. As you can tell earlier this morning that the cool air was in place with a low reading of 44 degrees and that temperature this afternoon will be moving upward but not much past 70 and then tonight another cool night and then another cool night tomorrow night and then we'll start seeing a gradual warm-up so by the end of the weekend we could see 80 degrees let's take a look at our forecast map and see how things are going to shape up as we go into this afternoon the uh, heavy snow possible up here in extreme northern Vermont and New Hampshire right here. They're still dealing with winter time up there and even some in upstate New York right in here. Also some snow. As we go farther to the west to find more snow, the province of Alberta and British Columbia, the, the upland areas will see some snow as well as some high areas of British Columbia. Now as we go back down into the 48, rain is possible along the coast right in here and then another larger area of rain out over the Midwest and even some thunderstorms mixed in. All of this in association with a cold front that is moving through the Midwest this afternoon. High pressure over the Four Corners area right in here will bring them some fair weather and an, yet another Pacific cold front moving down through the uh, Rockies and Cascades of the Pacific Northwest. Looking farther to the south in southern Florida and the Gulf Coast of Florida, rain and thunderstorms behind this cold front, which is now going to be through the Florida Straits, just to the south of the Florida Keys. Well, let's take a look now at our forecast and we'll see what we can expect for the next few days. Sunny with a high of 68 today, north wind at 8. Tonight clear, low of 43, winds will be light. Friday, sunny during the morning, chance of showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon with a high of 75, southwest wind 10 to 15 miles per hour. 
For Friday night, partly cloudy with a low of 48 degrees. Winds will be west at 6 miles per hour. Saturday sunny with a high of 77. West wind at 6. Saturday night, mostly cloudy with a chance of showers and thunderstorms developing late Saturday night and a low of 55. Partly cloudy on Sunday. Chance of showers during the morning with a high of 80 degrees. Sunday night, partly cloudy with a low of 54. Monday will be sunny with a high of 78 and a low of 58 on Monday night. Yesterday's high temperature, 71, our low this morning, 44. 3,500 hundredths of an inch of rain during the past 24 hours. And that's your Rocky Mount weather right up to now. Thanks, Fred. And with us now is our own sports reporter, Edward Green. Tell us what's the latest in sports. Well, we got a lot of stuff going on. High school baseball and softball starting to wrap up here this week. But uh, we're going to focus a little bit on uh, the Carolina Mudcats All tonight. Right. Well, when it seems as though whenever resurgent Carolina has needed a big hit, second baseman Cody Puckett has delivered. He is leading the Southern League and runs batted in this season and is in the top 10 in home runs, slugging, and OPS. The California native drafted in 2008 had a brief stint with the Mudcats at the end of last season, but is now looking to make an impact with the club from the start. I spoke with him this week about his current hot streak and the grind of a full major league season. And Cody, you've gotten off to such a great start this year. The ball must look like a Cody, beach ball coming yeah. up there right hey, now. Yeah, I'm feeling good at the plate right now. You know, just got to stay with my approach. Um, just stay calm up there and not try to do too much, and things are working out. It seems like every time the Mudcats have needed a clutch hit so far this year in one of their wins, it's been you getting it. What's What's been that feeling like to come through when the team needs it most? Oh, you know, it's it's good to come through when uh, the runners are on, but you just got to get up there with, uh, you know, stay calm up there when the runners are on and not try to do too much, and I think good things happen. What do you do when you're walking up to the plate in a key situation to kind of calm yourself and stay mentally prepared? Uh, I got to take those deep breaths. You know, I take about two or three good deep breaths before I walk up to the plate, and then I uh, just take my time and try to zone everything out and uh, see the ball and hit the ball. Now, you spent a little bit of time at the tail end of last season up here with the Mudcats. Do you think that maybe prepared you a little bit for staying with, starting with them this season? Well, I think it helped definitely because I've been played on the field. You know, I've seen everything around here, so I know what to expect a little bit. But, uh, you know, I think I was ready to come up here. Just talk a little bit now about uh, your minor league experience so far. You've been now in a couple of years after being drafted out of uh, California. And um, it's just, just tell us, summarize a little bit about your minor league baseball experience and now having this great success. Uh, it's been fun. You know, you just got to work hard. You, it's a grind playing 140 games every season. But, uh, you know, you just got to stay focused and stay mentally tough and good things happen. You talk about that 140 game grind, obviously a lot of peaks and valleys in that grind. How do you stay uh, mentally up for each and every game, even when you're in the down stretches as well as the upswings? Well, you can't get you can't get too high or you can't get too low. You can't, you know, dwell on when you're doing bad or uh, be too overconfident when you're doing too good. You just got to stay on that even plane and uh, play the whole season. Obviously, it's a team sport, but you're leading and actually quite or in the top ten in the Southern League in quite a few individual offensive categories. What does that mean to you to be all, not just doing well for the team, but above all the peers in the league? Um, it's still early in the season, so there's a lot of time left. I just got to stay, keep doing my thing. You know, can't think about it too much, and uh, hopefully, I will be there at the end of the year too. You guys have started playing a lot better as of late as after a slow start to the season. What do you think has kind of spurred on this turnaround for you guys? Um, I think at the start of the year we were just getting those rough breaks. We were losing one, two, two run ball games, and uh, now things are starting to fall our way, and we just got to keep it rolling. So now, how do you guys keep that momentum of playing well? Uh, just come out every night with the same mindset of, you know, going 100 percent and trying to win. And just finish up here, looking at these next few games coming up against uh, Montgomery. How do you approach them, especially some of their pitchers? Um, I think we it's big. We need to get these wins against these teams. Uh, we've been playing the tough teams the first couple of weeks of the season, so these are big games we got to get wins in. Do you think playing the upper echelon of the division right out to start with it will maybe help you guys in the long run? I think in the long run it will because we've seen them. We know what to expect coming from those guys. And uh, as hitters, too, we know, we've seen all their pitchers. So, you know, we got a game plan going up there. Unfortunately for Puckett and the Mudcats, after winning the first game of the series against Montgomery Tuesday, they fell last night 8-1. The Biscuits used a three-run fifth to take the lead and scored four in the eighth to put the game out of reach. 
Daryl Thompson took the loss for Carolina in a tough luck outing, striking out seven in five and two thirds and only allowing one earned run out of the four that scored during his watch. Matt Moore picked up the win, striking out nine in five innings and allowing the only Carolina run in the first on a single by Mike Costanzo, which scored Quentin Barry. And game three of the five game series is tonight in Zebulon as Travis Webb will get the start against Montgomery's Chris Archer. Both men will be looking for their first win of the season. So Marie, with this brief respite from the incredibly hot weather, seeing as we're only in like the seven, high 70s, really low 80s, mm -hmm. it's a great time to go to the ballpark and see some of these guys play. And obviously with uh, high school baseball and softball playoffs starting the next week, it's just a really great time to get out there and see some outdoor sports after being cooped up inside all yes, winter. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Edward. Thanks, Marie. Before we go, a reminder that today is National Day of Prayer. Going on right now in Rocky Mount, there is a service of prayer at the City Hall Courtyard, and there will be another at 6 p.m. at City Lake. Hot dogs and water will be provided at the City Lake service this evening. These events will be hosted by Cornerstone Vineyard Church in Rocky Mount. Senior Pastor Steve Webb says services will be dedicated for prayer of our nation, state, and local community. Also next Tuesday, we'll have an exclusive about the dangers of counterfeit goods with the Secretary of State Elaine Marshall. She shares with us new details about the raid of Rocky Mount Stockyard. You won't want to miss it. That's going to do it for us here today on Newsbreak. Join us next week as we continue to bring you news that's impacting our community. For WHIG-TV, I'm Marie Torres. Happy Mother's Day to all.